In this video, we're going to go over an example of how to calculate the line of best fit for a simple linear regression. So our goal is going to be to fill out this formula here. Y prime, a person's predicted value, equals BX plus A. So to do this, we're going to need to find B and then A. B is the slope of the line, and then B, which is a part of this formula, is used to find A, the y-intercept of that line. To do this problem, we're going to basically use data that we used when learning correlations way back when, and I do that on purpose because I really want to illustrate that the process for calculating a simple linear regression is essentially identical to doing a correlation. I'll link a video up here of how to calculate the correlation coefficient, and I really encourage you to review it if you're at all unfamiliar with that before trying to tackle these problems. All the different components of B and A here, sigma xy, sigma x, sigma y, n, sigma x squared, sigma y, all this stuff, all of these components are basically things you will need to find anyway when doing a correlation. So go ahead and review those steps. For now, I'm going to go ahead and reveal what those steps look like as a little bit of a reminder. So just to remind you, we have x and y. These are the two data, basically variables that we're correlating together, that we're doing a regression on uh, in this video here. Then we squared all the x values. We squared all the y values. We multiplied each x times y. So 5 times 6 is 30. And then we created all these new columns. And then we did sigma on all these different columns. So we added up all the x values. This is sigma x. We added up all the y values. This is sigma y. We added up all the x squared values. This is sigma x squared and so on. Now you pretty much need all of these values here except for sigma y squared. I still encourage you to, you know, do this table as normal just so it's a little bit less confusing, you know, whether you're doing a regression, you might forget, oh wait, which, you know, variable do I not need or whatever. Just do the table the normal way as we learned in the past. Get all these values and then just pick and choose what you need for the formulas. So I'm not going to go through how to make this table. Again, check out the video I linked earlier if you need that review. But for now, let's just get the values we need and see how we can reduce down to get our regression line. All right, so sigma x equals 39. The sum of all the x values is 39. Sigma y, the sum of all the y values, is 42. Sigma x squared, the sum of all the squared x values, is 289. And then sigma xy, again, I'm kind of skipping sigma y squared because as you'll see, it's not a part of these formulas here. So sigma xy, the sum of all the x times y products for each participant, is going to equal 294. And then finally, all we need is n. n is the sample size, and we get that from our index number here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 participants in the study, so n equals 6. Remember that these are pairs of observed values for each participant. We don't have 12 participants here. Don't make that mistake. We only have 6 participants. So this index 1 refers to Bob's data, index number 2 refers to Sally's data, and so on. All right, so now at this point we have all the values we need in order to compute the simple linear regression between these x and y variables. So let's plug in. Again, we have to start with B. We can't start with A because B is a part of the formula for A. So if you started with A, even though it's alphabetically first, and so you might want to start with A, you'll get stuck because you need B first. So let's start with B. B equals, and let's go ahead and set this up here. Forgive me if it's a little bit messy. This is kind of an ugly formula. So sigma xy equals 294. That's going to be the first value that goes in here. Minus sigma x times sigma y over n, so a minus 39 times 42 over n, which is 6. And then we have sigma x squared minus sigma x, pause because of parentheses, squared. So don't you know make the mistake of putting the same value here and here. These are two different values because of the parentheses. So sigma x squared with no parentheses refers to the 289 that we have right here. So 289 minus, and then sigma x in parentheses squared refers to sigma x, 39 squared. So we're going to have 39 squared over, again, n is 6. Now, this is also where I like to warn students, again, if you try and plug this into your calculator, it's pretty prone to... Uh, making mistakes. If you have any parentheses or division symbols in the wrong place or whatever, you're going to get an incorrect answer. So I really recommend reduce down. And if you do that, you're going to get 
you know, 21 over 35.5, and that's going to come out to your B value of 0 0.59. But again, do that in steps. I'm skipping a step or two here just to keep things brief, but take your time. Do 39 times 42, and then divide that by 6, and then put that in the numerator here, and so on, okay? Take your time. Don't, you know, go through the process perfectly and then get the problem wrong because of a simple mistake like that. That would be a shame. So our slope is 0.59. This is a positive slope. It's uh, you know kind of small, but what does it represent? For each additional unit of x, for each additional x, we can expect 0.59 increase in y. Okay. All right. So now that we have b, we can solve for a. A equals again sigma y. Don't need sigma y squared, but we do need sigma y. That's going to be 42 minus. Here's why we need b. 0 0.59, which is b, times sigma x, 39. And that's going to be over n once more, which is 6. If you reduce this down, a little bit easier, a little bit uh, prettier than b for sure, you get 3.16. So what does this mean? This is the y-intercept. It means that in the absence of x, if x equals 0, we can expect y to equal 3.16. Our prediction when x is 0 will be 3.16. That's where this line literally hits the y-axis. So our final answer for the simple linear regression is going to be y prime equals 0 0.59 times x plus 3.16. This is the line of best fit. This is your final answer. Once again, if you're comfortable sort of calculating a correlation coefficient, you're 90% of the way there for simple linear regressions already. Just follow those same steps to get these, you know, values that you need along with n and plug those into the appropriate formulas and you're done. So the process is identical to a correlation, the product is different, and here it is.